Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I thought I'd do today a video, clearly, um, of the 29 books I've read so far this year. I was going to do a recent read multiple times and I didn't. So now here we are with 29 books. I am stood up, um, partly, I say partly, mainly because I don't know why I'm just stood up and I figured this is going to help my posture when I because I constantly sit down I kind of hunch I don't know so the first two were actually for my course they were for an essay I had to do on the Yorkshire Ripper looking at the victims and how they were portrayed in the public narrative it was a good essay I had a lot of um interest in writing it so these two were wicked beyond belief by michael bilton and yorkshire ripper the secret murders by chris clark the first one was a lot more beneficial to me and i think it was a lot more interesting the second was kind of based on a lot of assumptions because obviously we don't know if he committed those murders he is now dead we cannot ask him so and also when this book was written he didn't really confirm or deny anything so it was a lot more speculative and that was it wasn't really what I wanted or needed for my essay um but yeah that's that's those two next we have Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman I had this book I think for two years three years now um and I hadn't read it and then I decided to read it and I'm so glad I did I'm so glad this was my first fiction book of the year because it was a great time it was so so well done and I can't believe this is Gail Honeyman's only novel and that this was her debut it's set around Eleanor Oliphant obviously who lives her life a certain way and then suddenly she gets this friend and this friend starts to show her about life and just being your own person despite your history, despite how you think you should live your life. And it's just really, really good. It, it's so heartfelt, but it's also got kind of an intriguing plot on the side of it, which I would highly, highly recommend reading. Um, it's a great book. I don't know if I'm blurry or if it's actually just my eyesight. Well, that's a lot better. Um, next we have As A Man Thinketh by James Allen. This is only 30 something pages. Um, I wouldn't recommend. I couldn't really tell you what it was about. It, I didn't want to say it was a waste of my time because that's quite rude. But it was a waste of my time. Next we have The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I listened to this and I would highly, highly recommend listening to it. This is about Siamara who is struggling with being a teenager but raised in a very strong household where she has to follow the rules, she's not allowed to date and it just follows her kind of wanting to push and wanting to break out of this family shell um and it's written in spoken word poetry i think that's the correct term for it and so when you listen to it the author elizabeth Acevedo, narrates it in this spoken word dynamic and i just think it's so good it flows so well and just to listen to it i would highly recommend it's really short as well next we have conversations with friends by sally rooney i do have quite an in-depth review of this I think on my 24 hour romance readathon uh, where I also talk about the other two books that I will get to but I just wanted to quickly say Conversations with Friends I did not anticipate loving it as much as I did and honestly it stands at one of my top books that I have read in my life I really 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 enjoyed it will be buying a physical copy of it because I read it on my Kindle and I already want to reread it it was one of the few books that I have finished and thought I could go back and read this from page one all over again then uh two others i also read in my 24 hour romance readathon i will leave that vlog down below that has um those reviews in uh love in lockdown by chloe james and the kiss quotient by helen hoang uh, these two heartwarming nice 
weren't my favourite romances, but I'm not necessarily just a romance reader. I don't just read romance. I need, I often like there to be something else within the romance. Um, next, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, I read, and I was so surprised. Uh, firstly, warning for domestic violence, because this book doesn't, there's no trigger warning at all on it, which is an issue. But there's this girl, Lily Bloom, who loves flowers. Can we just talk about that name, Lily Bloom? I mean, come on. She goes, I think it's New York. How have I already forgotten? I think it's New York. And she meets this guy called Ryle, who is training to be a doctor. And you know, he's a dream, he's a love boat, but he also has anger issues. And it kind of delves with how Lily deals with essentially being in a relationship that repeats her parents relationship where her father was really toxic and abusive to her mother and how she tries to get out of it i thought it was really really impactful i haven't read colleen hoover before but i did really enjoy is kind of the wrong word but this was such a great way to i don't know and next we have the donor by claire mcintosh this is a short story I have read Claire McIntosh's I Let You Go, would highly, highly recommend that. I read that years ago now, but I would really recommend that. This short story centres around a woman and a daughter, and a daughter has recently received a heart from a heart transplant. The mother of the son who donated the heart, who obviously died to donate the heart, they harvested his organs, you know what I mean, um, gets in touch and wants to get to know the daughter, but the mother, thinks oh there's something a bit iffy going on here i thought it was really good as a short story i could have I, I would have read a whole book on it honestly um like a, a thicker book a longer book but still the short story really really great highly recommend i think it was like 99p or something like that wasn't pricey at all next we've got revenge by yoko agawa this <laughs> is a collection of short stories didn't realise it was a collection of short stories. So I went halfway through thinking, wait, when are we gonna go back to the woman who was getting a cupcake? Where, where's that? It just wasn't, wasn't fun for me. Um, these short stories are supposed to surround death and some kind of dark thing associated with that. I just didn't enjoy them. I liked the first one, but that was about it, honestly. It, it didn't really do a lot for me so yeah next we have trust exercise by susan troy this i thought seemed really really interesting about these two characters sarah and david who went to high school together but there was some sordid things that kind of went on and years later they're still dealing with the repercussions of that however it was just fucking weird i didn't like it i thought it was too strange it crossed the barriers of consent without addressing the fact that it wasn't consensual i don't even know what it is because the book opened with this girl being groped in the dark eh? At, in class in the name of drama i didn't get it i didn't like it it just made me feel all kinds of weird and i was not a fan at all next though we highly highly moved up in the world and i read all the bridgerton books in a week still really really proud of myself i did nothing else and i mean nothing my sleep schedule went to shit i barely went outside the house i my whole life centered on bridgerton for that one week i do have a really in-depth review of the series um i think it's like almost an hour long but i do have timestamps in there as well so you can go and like click on whatever you want to see i do non-spoilers and spoilers i discuss the controversy around bridgerton and the comparison to the tv show of the books so if you would like to watch that i will leave that uh, also linked down below next i read my Ple oh god I'm falling over next i read my policeman by bethan roberts i didn't expect to love this one as much as i did i thought the premise sounded really interesting it's set in 1950s brighton you have this woman called marion who is in love with her best friend's older brother called tom and they get married tom is a policeman however 
Tom harbors a secret. It's not explicitly clear in the book whether he is homosexual or bisexual, but he has an affair with a man called Patrick and it is about how all three have to keep this relationship together until one of them breaks and the repercussions of when one of them breaks is so serious and devastating because of course what you need to remember in this time is that homosexuality was not legal, it wasn't legalised until 1967. So 1950s at this time it was illegal and people got sent to prison for being homosexual or engaging in homosexual acts it was really really serious and i just i really loved the way this book was done the perspectives you got and the way it was written and the way the book was structured really pushed it from here to here for me i it was cracking it was a great time hard stuff to read about but still a great time next i read the churchill factor how one man made history by boris johnson this was a gift and so i read it well i did want to read it anyway it's been it's been on my list this is probably one of the easiest non-fiction books i have read bearing in mind i <laughs> have done a history degree i have done multiple history degrees this was really really easy to follow i cannot fault the writing of it i think the way that johnson constructed it was really well done i i can't fault it if you want to read about churchill i would actually recommend this one it was really really informative and i i don't have anything bad to say about it really it was just a really well written non-fiction book about Churchill. Next I read My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I actually had a few conversations um, about this with some people on my bookstagram just because of the level of this book it was just not pleasant at all. So you follow Vanessa who's a 15 year old girl who engages in a relationship with her English teacher and then you have that set of chapters and it flashes forward to her in her 30s and her English teacher, the man that she had an affair with when she was younger, is facing the repercussions of another student coming out and saying that he assaulted her. <laughs> I thought this book was going to be something important. It was one of my most anticipated reads of 2021 so much so that when i couldn't buy it from waterstones or i couldn't pick up my pre-order rather from waterstones i scoured every sainsbury's and tesco because people had said it was there and then i read it and i was so disappointed it made me so uncomfortable the way the sex scenes were described first of all was harrowing i felt hurt by it the plot halfway through kind of just something happens and it's not necessary at all i get the other story the side one with this girl i thought that was good you know it emphasized how victims aren't believed how things are brushed under the carpet but the main victim i felt there was no acknowledgement that it was abuse which i think is an important room for discussion but it didn't have a proper conversation with it if that made sense it just kind of nobody even tried to convince her or nobody tried to offer up a side as to why it wasn't okay and why she did deserve better and nobody had the consensual discussion with her either and it was just a bit it was not a pleasant book and I wouldn't recommend to anybody, honestly, I, I wouldn't recommend. Next is The War on Women by Sue Lloyd Roberts. This is a collection of essays about all the kind of hardships that women face. It covers things like um, forced marriage, female genital mutilation. It's really harrowing and I wouldn't um, recommend if you're not in the right frame of mind to read it. It was powerful, don't get me wrong, but some of the stuff was very hard for me to read. Next is Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. I loved this book. This was what I needed when I was 19 years old. 
and I didn't have it and I wish I had read it when I was 19 I don't know if it was out when I was 19 but it was one of those books that I just needed and I'm still glad I read it now because I feel like I can look back and be like what the fuck were you doing just with even more evidence of what the fuck were you doing but I loved it I love the way it was structured I love the different stories that Dolly told I also loved the like little recipes and the little snippets I thought it was interesting how she kind of looked with hindsight on her past but wasn't ashamed of it either she acknowledged it, it was there she acknowledged that certain decisions were not the right ones to make but they still happened and life isn't worth having regrets over but I just I really really loved it and I would highly highly recommend to anybody who's struggling if you need self-love if you need to remind yourself that being single is okay I just read this it was just a great book the next one is her name was rose by claire allen this was a really really good thriller that i read i did kind of predict the situation but i don't think you could predict it i just feel like i normally guess these things and i am normally correct i just watch too many detective shows that i think is the reason but i would highly recommend this and i don't think it is that predictable i feel like depending on who you are but this follows emily who witnesses a woman being hit by a car and killed instantly. Emily is so shocked by what happens. I think it is PTSD, but nobody really says it is or not. Emily lets this woman step out in front of her and she is the reason she believes why Rose is dead because if she would have stepped out, she would have been hit by a car. And it kind of follows Emily then stepping into Rose's life and becoming a receptionist and making friends with all these people and then getting into a relationship with Kian and kind of filling the Rose shaped hole in everybody's life and you don't know who actually is good or why certain stuff is happening and it just takes a really interesting turn. I absolutely flew through this one, it was such an easy read and if you want a thriller I would recommend this one. And finally the last one is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn, I don't know if it's Gillian or Gillian Flynn. This is the same author who wrote Gone Girl which I, <laughs> I did not like. Um, I just I predicted the ending and from there on it got kind of monotonous and boring because I I guess what would happen essentially um, However, this is a short story I decided to read and I could not actually tell you anything about it I can't remember what happened. I don't even think whilst I was reading it I understood what was going on apart from the fact that the narrator opens up with telling the reader that she had to stop giving hand jobs because she was the best at giving hand jobs and there was there's another woman involved and I don't know I just say skip it not worth your time honestly just a bit meh you know um but aside from that it's been a really really good reading year for me so far I'm really happy I think I've probably read more books now than I had done last year by September, October. 2020 wasn't a great reading year for me, but I'm so glad I'm back into the swing of reading. I have so many great things planned. And so yeah, they are the 19 books I've read so far this year. I kind of blitzed through them, I think, because one, it's been a while since I read some of them, so I can't remember everything that happened. But I hope you enjoyed this video, I'll leave all my social media and stuff down below and I'll talk to you again soon.